We have two different weapons of choice that have just seemed to emerge. What's up guys, David Moss Jr. here, and if you've watched any of my videos in the past from building a DIY cold plunge to reviewing cold plunges, you probably noticed that I never talk about using a chest freezer as your plunge. And the reason why I never really talked about these is because there's so many safety concerns and there's so many little things that you have to do to ensure that it's gonna one, work, but two, it's gonna be safe. Well, I think today it's gonna change because we are going to be reviewing the brand new box plunge cold plunge, which is capable of getting your water temperature down to 32 degrees safely and clean. I'm pretty excited after a month of testing. I'm ready to finally review it. So let's jump right in. Before I jump into the size and the specs of the box plunge, because they do have an entire arsenal of different sizes to talk about, I do wanna talk about what my number one concern was gonna be and why I wanted to test this for so long before bringing a review to the market, and that is safety. One of the reasons that I've always steered clear of using a chest freezer in the first place is because of the fact that this is really just a big freezer. It's not meant for humans to get inside. They weren't built for that, right? So there's a lot of safety precautions that people had to take if they wanted to use a chest freezer at their home as their ice bath. Now, yes, they are inexpensive and there's a lot of benefits to using them because you can get the water cold but there were so many safety concerns that I wanted to stay away from that but box plunge has changed my mind on this if you look right over here on the box now this is where all of the powerful components are stored for the box plunge you have a pump a filter ozone and you have an on off kill switch all built right into this box and if you can see here this little magnet as soon as you take the lid off the box plunge that magnet is going to detach and that's why the lid is not on hinges and the lid actually comes clear off. For safety, they want you to take the lid off and actually go set it off to the side. Now, one of the cool things I noticed is on the side, it is like a nice little plastic bumper so you can set it on its side so that you don't have to mess up your skin. One of the other cool things about box plunges, they have a lot of different looks. You can get a wood grain look, you can get a carbon fiber look, as you see here, you have black, white, and then you have just the standard. You don't have to get the luxury skins. So there's so many different options to make this customizable and it actually looks really, really cool. I get a lot of compliments on the box plunge. But back to safety, right now there is nothing happening inside this plunge. All of the water has stopped. There is no electricity running into this plunge at all. Another really cool part to the safety feature is as soon as you put the lid back on, the box itself the electrical part that chills the water itself actually won't turn on for a couple more minutes to give you time to get away from the plunge as you're probably wet when you get out. So they've thought of a lot of the safety features that have really debunked my way of thinking with it. So now let's get past the safety features and let's get into the plunge. Three important things to note when you are shopping for a cold plunge. The box plunge is the coldest cold plunge on the market. It can reach temperatures of complete freezing. I actually set this down to 32 degrees to experience that and ice was forming at the bottom and the top of my plunge. I actually had to turn the temperature back up so that it wouldn't turn into a complete box of ice. A few things to note about the Box Plunge Company is they are made right here in Miami, Florida. I'm a Florida boy, so I think that's really cool, and they can ship all over the United States of America. They actually come in six different sizes. This is called the Box 14 for reference if you're looking at any of the other options out there, but they have smaller sizes. They also have larger sizes, so if you want a two-person, three-person, or a family size Box Plunge, you can absolutely do that through Box Plunge as well. They're designed to reach temperatures of 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. They're extremely efficient. They've actually been tested and they're one of the most efficient ways to have a cold water tank or a cold plunge at your house. And one thing that I really like is that they do not condensate one bit and they do not drip. So you could actually have this on carpet inside your house if you wanted to or in your garage and they make no noise. So there's a lot of pros to a box plunge. And since we've listed some of the pros, I feel it's only fair for me to list a few of the cons. So after testing this for a month, a few of the cons that I noticed is one, when you do take the lid off, it causes for no more circulation. The pump and the filter are turned off, so there's no water flow. So when you do get into this plunge, you aren't experiencing that rushing water sensation, which breaks up the thermal layer on your skin and allows for you to really get that deep cold plunge experience. Now, on the other hand, you can get your water much colder in here, so you don't necessarily need to have that circulation, but I sometimes like to have that water rushing around me. It just kind of really heightens my senses and gives you that really, really cool cold plunge experience. 
Another con is since everything is turned off, there is a pre-filter on top, which will end up pulling in any grass or any debris that might make its way into your plunge or any sand. And when you turn it off, that water is no longer being sucked in. So some of the grass or hair or whatever might end up floating around in your plunge while you're plunging. So it's very important to get one of those little nets and skim the stuff out of your plunge as often as you can, especially when the power's turned off. Other than that, I don't really have a lot of cons to talk about. I've been very impressed with this. I've been very impressed with the overall build. So now let's go ahead and jump in and look at the overall build and see exactly what you think. Now let's talk about price. The starting price for the box plunge is currently $2,500. And yes, I do have a discount code that I'll share with you. You can use the link down in the description below or use discount code MAUS, that's M-A-U-S, and that'll save you a little bit of money off your purchase. So make sure you check the link down in the description below. But there's quite a few options that you can get when you buy a box plunge. You can get different skins like we talked about earlier. You can get different sizes like we talked about earlier. But at the end of the day, the box plunge is gonna come safe and it's gonna come equipped to give you that 32 degree, very cold water that you're looking for at a very affordable price and you can take the guesswork out of hoping that you've done the DIY right. Now let me explain, if you've watched any videos using a chest freezer as a cold plunge on the internet, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of prep work and there's a lot of work that has to happen in order to do it correctly and safely. And one of those things is you actually have to seal the inside of the chest freezer with a specific sealant to make sure that the water doesn't penetrate into the plunge or also down onto your floor. Those these are freezers, they're not necessarily meant to be filled with water. But Box Plunge takes the guesswork out of it and they went ahead and sealed the entire thing for you. Not only that, but it's outfitted perfectly for your filter, for your pump, and for your ozone to be out of the way so you have maximum space inside the Box Plunge while you're using it. Another thing to note is that everything you see here did come with my kit. This is a towel holder that goes on the outside of your plunge and it is all just a suction cup. So you can just take this off if you don't need a towel holder. It's just a nice touch, especially if you have this on the inside of your house. You also have a suction cup phone mount up here, which is positioned perfectly for getting those selfies while you're in your plunge or watching a video while you're in your plunge. Make sure you subscribe to David Moss Jr.'s YouTube channel and watch some of my guided plunges there. But you could also set your timer. There's a lot of apps coming out now that you can set your timer and track your cold plunge. So it's a really cool spot to put that. Also on the lid, you have these suction cup handles that you can take off if you want as well. Some people like them, some people don't, but it just makes it easier to take the lid off. And those are really the main accessories that come on the outside of the plunge. Let's talk about the components and exactly how this thing works. So right now I have everything turned off, so it's not gonna be that exciting to see. But on the outside here is an ink bird. What an ink bird is, is it's a controller of the temperature. And basically what it does is you will set a temperature that you want this to get down to, and the ink bird will allow power to go to the chiller until it reaches that temperature, then it's gonna remove the power from the chiller and maintain that temperature. So it's gonna constantly read the temperature of the water inside, and then it's gonna determine if it needs to cool the water down anymore or not. I also wanna point out that I have mine outside. It is one of those things that you can have it outside. They recommend it being inside or under cover. And here's why my ink bird has started to melt. The sun really does hit this thing most of the day and I live in Florida. So that's just one thing to take note of. But now if we open up the inside of our box here, we'll see a few of the other components. So inside this box, which is weather sealed and it's really nice, there's a timer that's gonna allow my ozone to actually turn on when I want my ozone to turn on, helping to keep the water extremely clean and takes the guesswork out of it. We have our delay control, which is going to, once again, once the power is put back into here, it's going to delay turning on the chest freezer itself. And then we have a power strip in here, which everything's connected to. It's not anything too crazy, but I think it's important for you to know what's inside this box. Now down here, you'll notice is a typical chest freezer's control of temperatures. So you can set it as, as cold as you want. You can set it as cold or coldest. I have it set at coldest because the ink bird's gonna naturally turn the power off once my temperature is reached. So I don't really have to worry about that, but if you do wanna worry about it, that's where that is and that's what this does. And one more really cool thing while we're talking about this is it plugs right into a standard outlet. There's only one plug needed. Everything else goes right into the box. So it's super easy and a super clean setup. So now as we're working our way onto the inside, I'm gonna actually do some measurements for you. I like to measure the inside. The outside's important too, but you can find all those measurements to the different sizes online if you do end up going to their website and looking. But as far as the inside goes, I'm a little bit more of a broad shoulder guy and you have 22 inches from wall to wall. 
inside here, which feels like compared to some of the other plunges that I've gotten into, it feels kind of tight. So it is a little bit more of a snug, get down and get in type of experience. As far as the length goes, this plunge has 49 inches from the top to the top, but there is a small little shelf inside there that you're not supposed to step on. That's where the condenser and everything that chills this entire plunge is. So you don't wanna make it a habit to sit or stand on that. It actually says, do not sit. I've gotten on it a few times just to kind of test it. And it's very, very sturdy. So I would just say, don't stand on it. Don't use it as a step, but it is there. Meaning that the inside where your butt's gonna go goes to 40 inches. You've got a lot more room than it looks because your feet are gonna go up against this wall when you get in. And as you can see right now, I've got, I've got six inches of play where the water will rise as I get in. And that's important too. When you're filling up your plunge for the first time, make sure that you get in when you have about six inches of room so that you can see where that water line is gonna go when you get in, because the last thing you want is for you to fill it all up, make sure everything's cool, and then have this inside your house, get in and then the water all come rushing over the sides because you forgot to think about that. So the pump and the filter are off to the side over here and take up about 14 inches and they only come off the wall about six inches. They don't take up as much room as it might look in this video and your feet go over here. So you've got plenty of room. As you can see at the bottom, it also comes with a nice little rubber mat, a non-slip mat, and all the components are off to the side and they have this nice little wire wrap that holds everything in place. So there's not a lot of stuff going on. There's not a lot of stuff moving around in here when you're taking your plunge and even when you're not. I also wanna jump in and talk about the maintenance. So as you can see, there is a filter. This is a 20 micron filter. It's, it's the same type of filter that a lot of the cold plunge companies are using. But one of the concerns that I have that I have not experienced yet is when it comes time to change that filter, you can't take it off outside of the water. So as soon as you unscrew that, some of that nasty filtered water is gonna now go into your plunge. The good news is it's a pretty heavy duty filter. And as soon as you put a new filter in there and turn it back on, it should clean up pretty quick. Plus you have the ozone that's constantly pumping in here. Your water shouldn't get nasty anytime soon, but it is one thing to note as a potential concern when it comes time to actually change that filter. And earlier I was talking about the pre-filter. It's right here on top, just kind of sits right on top there. What I'll do is I'll take it out and I'll actually go use the hose and I'll spray this thing out every once in a while, but it does a great job collecting a lot of the stuff that kind of floats around inside there. You just put it right back on there. And then tucked in behind that is the ozone rock where it will bubble up. Never been able to see that because it only turns on obviously at certain times, but also when the lid is on. So it's one of those things you'll almost never get to see this stuff operating. At this point, I feel pretty confident that I answered most of the questions, at least the questions that I had before I ended up setting this up. But if you have a question that I have not answered, post that down in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer every question that ends up down in the comments. And I'm curious at this point, what are your thoughts about the box plunge? Is this something you could see yourself investing in or would you rather still go the DIY route or is there another option that might even be better? So just post your thoughts down in the comments below too because I love to hear from you. What is it that you're thinking? But also now I feel like after I've answered all these questions, it's probably important for me, a six foot one, 200 plus pound guy to get into the box plunge 14, test it out, and show you guys exactly how I fit. You wanna do that? Well, let's go ahead and do it. All right, let's go ahead and test this thing out. So it's currently set at 35, which is super cold. It's way colder than I ever really enjoy cold plunging. To me, my favorite temperature is 44, but I felt like since it had the capabilities of getting down below 37, which is where most of the cold plunges on the market stop, might as well really experience it and enjoy it. So one of the things to notice when you first get into any cold plunge is you're gonna have that shock fight or flight kind of mode kick on in your body as soon as you get in. So as you can see, my feet rest very comfortably up on top here. It's a very comfortable plunge. My butt, I can obviously sit down and get my entire upper body under the water very simply. Doing a full dunk is also extremely simple and I guess you're gonna wanna see that, right? Why not? Oh my God, that was cold. The cool thing is, is there's no jets or anything that get in my way. So I can literally just kind of get super comfortable on the back here. The sides are not warm as some of the other cold plunges, the sides are insulated and they can be a little bit warm depending on the ambient temperature outside. The sides of this are still really, really cold. So if your skin touches the side, if your shoulders or your back touch the side, you're still getting that stimulus of cold water. If you're six foot one, 210 pounds, the box plunge 14 is a perfect size for you. Ooh, that's a cold one. I will tell you 30, 
35, 34, 33, 32 degrees is extremely cold. And here's one of the benefits to using a colder cold plunge is less time. You see, if you have your cold plunge set at 60 degrees or 55 degrees and you're just getting started, you're gonna probably want to be in there or you're gonna be able to stay in there a much longer period of time than if you were to get into 32 degree water where you're gonna immediately feel that shock. Your body's gonna immediately start to release all the endorphins and dopamine that are going to give you the stimulus that you're looking for in a cold plunge in the first place. So there's definitely some benefits to being able to get down to freezing cold temperatures. Well, there you have it, my friends. That is the box plunge review. I would say that it's something worth considering, especially for the price and for everything that you get. You get a nice, safe, extremely efficient, and very cold option. So it's really cool. I think it's something worth considering, but what do you think? Please post down in the comments below your thoughts on the box plunge after watching this video. I appreciate you guys for watching this video all the way through. Please make sure that you like this video so it helps other people out there looking for content like this find this video. If you have a friend who's looking for a box plunge, a cold plunge, or maybe looking to do a DIY, send this video to them so they can see the other options out there because I don't think a lot of people know that this even exists yet. So I'm excited to be one of the first people to review box plunge and get it out there for you to see. And if you're looking to get a box plunge, make sure you use that link down in the description below and use discount code MOSS. It'll save you some money off of your purchase. I appreciate all of you for watching. I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you on the next video and God bless.